Good morning and welcome to Frederick County Public Library's virtual programming. I'm Becky and today we have Kathy Brown with the Frederick Bird Club here to introduce you to birding in Frederick County. So Kathy, I'll hand it over to you and we can get started with your presentation. Thank you, Becky. And okay. here we go. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I bet Becky is getting that up. Uh, I moved to Frederick County 20 years ago. I had made taken early retirement, uh, came to this beautiful, varied portion of the state uh, to meet people and to get a new hobby. I joined the Frederick Bird Club, and 20 years later, here we are still. Uh, Becky, can you get that? Full screen. Yep, yep. Let me get started with the okay. first slide. There we are. We're we're working. We're we're going. Okay. There we go. All right. So um, we're going to start with this handsome cardinal on the front, and it is clearly a winter scene for him because he's uh, all puffed up. And we're really going to talk about uh, not just winter, but we're going to emphasize that a little bit because it is winter. Slide deck, be Becky, please. Mm -hmm. Here's what we're going to cover. We're going to look at some of the common birds in Frederick County. We'll discuss how well our bird populations are doing, uh, some ideas of what we can do to help them. And then I have a, a few things that I suggest you do if you'd like to start birding a little more seriously. And then ideas of places to go to enjoy our area birds. Slide. Slide, thank you. So we're really gonna start with the basics. What is a bird? Well, the Oxford Dictionary defines it as a warm-blooded, egg-laying vertebrate distinguished by the, possession, by the possession of feathers, wings, a beak, and typically by being able to fly. Well, I have to add that they often have amazing colors and beautiful singing. Slide. Now here's a gorgeous bird that is common in Frederick County. This is a juvenile red-tailed hawk and he does an excellent job of demonstrating good design. So look at those big long wings and then look how streamlined his body is. He has no external ears, so he reduces wind drag. Notice how his feet are tucked in there. Those uh, feathers at the tip of the wings are highly maneuverable and the tail, well, it acts just like a rudder. It is no surprise that modern airplanes look like birds because this design has evolved over millions of years. Slide. So worldwide there are over 10,000 bird species. In North America we have 1,154 and in Maryland we have 442. Now to compare this to some other places, Columbia is the birdiest country in the world. It's only one ninth the size of the United States, but it has over 1,800 bird species. Now 442 may, may not look that impressive, but think about it. North America has only a little over 11,000. So Maryland has almost 40% of the birds that have ever been seen in North America. And how that is possible is location, location, location. Slide. Maryland is small. I mean, we have a very small landmass, but it's a pretty birdy place. We have a lot of different habitats. We have mountains to the west, we have the Chesapeake Bay and the Atlantic Ocean in the east. There are plentif plentiful waterways and birds certainly need water, just like every living thing. We have mountains, fields, we have numerous parks, state, local, national. We have Black Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge near Cambridge, and that is a premier wildlife refuge on the eastern seaboard. 
and our state is in a prime location on the Atlantic migration route. So every th spring and fall, millions of birds and many, many species pass through our state, hopefully staying for a little while so us birders get a chance to see them. Slide. So first we're gonna talk about some year-round residents. Year-round means that they are here in the winter months. And if they're here in the winter months, they have to be able to find food. So these are birds that eat seeds, they eat dried berries, or they eat well-hidden grubs or other insects. Now on the left, you're probably very familiar with these guys. This is a male and female pair of goldfinch. Uh, they are in their summer or their breeding plumage. You may think that we don't have goldfinches in the wintertime because the male does a complete change of garb for the winter. He completely molts all of his feathers. He loses his jaunty black cap, all of his bright gold, and he becomes very muted, more like the female on the right there. Now, another bird that you may not be familiar with, but it is one of the most gorgeous birds imaginable. And this is the cedar waxwing. And as you can see, it has a berry in its beaks. It is just an elegant, elegant bird. And they are more, they are not more common in the winter, but they are more obvious in the winter. First of all, there are no leaves on the tree, so you can see them, a big bonus. And they fly around in big flocks and they're looking for food sources. My introduction to them when I first moved to Maryland was one snowy day when a flock of them descended on my American holly and stripped it of every single berry. And when they were done with mine, they headed over to my neighbors and they started on them too. <laughs> they have a very high pitched call. And if you learn it, you'll probably hear them before you see them. If you can see, they have a little red tip, usually several of them, on their wings, and this is where they get their name. It looks like the head of a match tip, the good old fashioned kitchen match that uh, I'm sure you can still buy somewhere. <laughs> Slide. Here are a couple of birds that I'm sure you are well aware of. Uh, we tend to take the morning dove on the left for granted. I think it would be hard to travel for a mile in Frederick County anywhere and not see morning doves. They're comfortable with humans, they're in cities, they are ground feeders, so they're in the fields looking for things. They are on wires all over the place. You can see them on the wires, but they're worth really appreciating a little bit. They're really fairly elegant birds. Look at that silhouette, that nice long tail. They have cherry red feet. And then if you can see closely, they have beautiful blue patch around their eyes. Now on the right is the female cardinal. Now she's certainly not as, as vibrant as the all male red, but she really is a very subtle beauty. Look at that big, strong beak. A cardinal can crush sunflower seeds. So you will definitely see them at, their, at your feeder. But although she's subtle, she has that really pretty little black patch around her eyes. She has a little bit of orange accent on her, her tail, her wings, and her, her crest. Remember, she sits on eggs, so she needs to be more subtle in looks. Slide. Well, here are a couple that are just perky favorites. I just enjoy them, both of them immensely. On the left is a chickadee and on the right is a nuthatch. Now we actually have two chickadees in Maryland. Up in the mountains, we have the black capped chickadee and here in Frederick, we have the Carolina chickadee. They look virtually the same and many birders can't tell them apart. So if you see one in Frederick, just be happy that you're seeing a Carolina chickadee. Now the nuthatch is a very elegant bird in my opinion. Uh, and he has something very unique. He can do something very unique. This is the white-breasted nuthatch, and it's common in our, they come to feeders and they're common in our woods. He walks down trees. 
and he is the only bird that does that. All of the woodpeckers walk up trees. And the theory is that he's looking for the insects that all the other birds have missed. So if you see a, tr a bird walking down a tree, I can assure you it's going to be a white-breasted nuthatch. Slide. And then we have many birds in our open field, and you probably have seen these. On the left, we have a song sparrow. Now they like to perch fairly low down, sing their hearts out, and notice that red heart on its chest, red heart. Notice the <laughs> obvious heart on their chest. Uh, that will help you identify a song sparrow. On the right, we have a bird that needs no introduction, the beautiful uh, Eastern blue bird with their iridescent blue feathers and their nice warm brick chest. Uh, beautiful birds and frankly, bring me joy every time I see one. Slide. We also have many stunning woodpeckers. Uh, the one on the left is a red-headed woodpecker. And if you had to design something, you couldn't do better than this bird. It is just stunning. It's bright red head, it's glossy black feathers, white feathers. They're beautiful when they fly and they're just a delight to see them. They are not common, but they are seen regularly, particularly in Northern Frederick County. On the right, we have a very common woodpecker and that is the red belly. I want you to notice both of these are climbing up trees, by the way. Uh, the red belly uh, is easy to see. They're, they're big birds. They have a distinctive cry. They usually are in pairs flitting around trees. You might hear them drumming. But um, they really enjoy coming to your suet cake. So if you have, if you're anywhere near woods and you have a suet cake, you probably are going to have red, red belly woodpeckers come visit you. Slide. Oh, and you probably know these birds because they're noisy, so they definitely get our, atten our attention. On the left is the raucous blue jay. Now, if you can see them close up, you will be really astounded at how beautiful this bird is. They have so many different shades of blue. They have beautiful patterns on the tail and on their, on their wings. They have that jaunty crest. They do tend to travel in groups and they can be very noticeably loud when they come to visit. Much more subtle in coloring is our Northern Mockingbird on the right. This is a pretty unique bird and you may have noticed them because first of all, they like to get right out in the open and sing and they're mimics. So they mimic many other birds, but they can mimic anything. They will mimic car door slamming, sirens going off, squeaky wheels. Um, they are excellent mim mimics. They also are fairly unique in that they sing day and night. Virtually no other bird sings during the night, but the mockingbird does. And they have one other thing I admire about them. They're southern birds and they can take the heat. A few years ago, we had temperatures over several days. It was, it was over 100. It was miserable. I finally had to go to the grocery store in an air-conditioned car, of course. The only thing I saw out were mockingbirds, and they were up on the wire, perfectly comfortable, enjoying the day. Slide. Ah, uh, well, they're not our most beautiful birds. But they're plentiful and we need them. Our vultures, we actually have two kinds of vultures. We have black vultures, but these are the turkey vultures, named because of their resemblance to turkeys with their red heads. Um, you no doubt know that, tur that vultures do not have feathers on their heads because as this one guy is showing, when you're sticking your head into the carcass of a dead animal, you wanna be able to clean it quickly. We should be very grateful to these guys. We have a lot of deer, we have a lot of collisions, we have a lot of roadkill, and these are our cleanup crews. I once watched them take a newly 
killed deer down to skin and bones in three days. And I finally appreciated what exactly that phrase meant. Slide. Now we've ta been talking about birds that are here year round because they have food sources. But now I wanna talk a little bit about a contrast so you can understand that a little better. On the left, we have the American bald eagle. On the right, we have an osprey. If you can see close, each of them is holding a fish. They both hunt and eat fish. But a big difference is the eagle is a generalist. The eagle can eat a lot of other things. It'll eat small mammals, it will eat other birds, and it will eat roadkill. The osprey, on the other hand, really will only eat fish and a few other things that are warm weather um, frogs and such. So as soon as it starts getting cold, the osprey is gonna head south where it can be assured of open water and reliable food sources. Slide. So let's talk about some of our warm weather residents. And when we say they're residents, uh, they don't just pass through. They come here to breed. They actually come to our area to breed. And they primarily eat things that are available in warm water weather. They eat insects, fruit, nectar, or fish. On the left, we have just a stunning bird. This is an indigo bunting. They're very small birds. You may not have noticed them because unless you have binoculars, all you see is a little dark bird up on a wire. But in the springtime, they are singing constantly. They are stunningly blue when the light hits them and just a delightful little bird. And of course, everyone knows the Baltimore Oriole on the right. They're known for their pendulum nests hanging nests, which are intricately, intricately created, woven. Um, they are very partial to fruit. Uh, a lot of people put out oranges for them. They also are very partial to grape jelly, but they're just beautiful birds. Slide. Now, when the weather warms up and the ice is, is gone away, uh, Couple of the waders that you might have noticed are the green heron on the left and the great blue heron on the right. Now the green is much smaller. You may not have ever had a chance to see one, but they're fairly common. They are stunning birds, a lot of color, a lot of pretty pattern, and they will sit on the side of a water source just frozen. It's so easy to overlook them because they blend in so well, but they will wait longer than you're willing to wait them out for some food to come into uh, easy striking range. Now the great blue heron is three feet tall, so they're kind of hard to miss. Also, if you're three feet tall and you have a bill like that, not much is gonna mess with you. So they're really not afraid of much, but look at the bills on both of these. They look like daggers. And frankly, that's how they use them to kill their prey. I will point out that the green heron always migrates, but every winter, a few of the great blue herons do stick around, particularly if we have a relatively mild winter. We just finished a bird count and we had, oh, five or six green herons because they still had access to open water and food sources. S slide. Uh, here's a couple of, of little grassland jewels. The one on the left is the common yellow throat, that jaunty black uh, eye patch, the bright yellow throat. Uh, you may have heard them, and not seen them. Often you'll pass by a shrub and notice a little um, activity and a witchety, witchety, witchety. Well, that's the common yellow throat. He used to be known as the Maryland yellow throat, and frankly, Maryland birders are still a little put out that they decided to change his name. On the right is just a beautiful little jewel. This is a tree swallow. And you may have seen them around bluebird houses because they're cavity nesters and they are very happy to uh, build their nests in 
in man-made nests next to bluebirds. And it works out actually very good for both of them because this is an aggressive little bird. It, uh, you get close to their nest, they're gonna dive bomb you. The bluebird on the other hand seems to be perfectly happy to have them next, next to them. And the bluebird is, is well, they're very placid. Um, that's why we have bluebird trails and people can go in and check the nests because the bluebirds seem to accept that just fine. Slide. Now, one other bird that I'm particularly fond of that we have throughout Frederick County is the wood thrush. And this is a bird of the deep woods, so you may not have seen him. Uh, but they are, they are quite appealing, and in my mind, they are one of the most beautiful singers in the world. And I'm gonna play their song for you. So you may not have seen them, but hopefully you've heard them. As soon as I can hit that. So I have wood thrushes in the woods behind me and they have a big migration. They go down into Central America, Yucatan Peninsula and, and below. And it's a very perilous migration. They're flying over the Gulf of Mexico in a single night. So every, every spring I anxiously await them. Uh, their numbers are way down, unfortunately, as we continue to develop in this, in this uh, county. Uh, they need uninterrupted forest, but um, I'm knocking on wood. So far, every year they come back and I can enjoy them. Slide. So, the next slide, please. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, we're now going to discuss how are our birds doing. And the short answer to that is not very good. Slide. Mankind has, over our history, we've not been very kind to birds, either both intentionally and unintentionally. Uh, this is a hunting scene from the late 1800s. Uh, people went out, men went out with their guns, and they are doing market hunting. This is not just hunting for their own family food. This is hunting to uh, send things to market to cities in the East, for example. And there were no restrictions whatsoever. You could kill anything, any species, any number of things. There were no restrictions about the time you could go hunting. So if you were hunting during breeding season, not only did you kill that bird, you, but you killed all future generations. So I think it's safe to say this is what we call a non-sustainable business plan. And by the late 1800s, both sportsmen and scientists realized that there was a real problem, that many birds were uh, declining very significantly. To counter this, uh, there were certain things put into place, conservation, and a new concept, the count, came into being. And the idea was, hey, instead of killing birds, let's go ahead and count them. Slide. In 1900, an ornithologist created the concept of the Christmas bird count. People went out in Canada and New York and they counted all the birds they could find. Well, that was the first count and they've been held every year since then. Frederick County has held a Christmas bird count since 1949. It's called the Katotkin bird count. We have a 15 mile diameter and the center of that is Thurmont. Uh, we have collected over 72 years of information about bird species and numbers in our county. And that data and the entire massive CBC database has been used for the basis of over 400 scientific studies. Many of us in the Frederick Bird Club have noted that we seem to not be seeing the species as frequently as we used to. So I was able to mine that data because it 
I had to agree. I was not seeing many species that like simple things like chickadees that we've always had coming to, to feeders. Slide. So I mined the data and this is what I found. No, I'm not a scientist, but the numbers do speak for themselves. I compared the 10 most recent years of data with the previous <clears throat> 10 years of data. And here's what I found. Mallards had declined 32%, the American kestrel 39%, mourning doves 43%, the chickadee, Carolina chickadee, a common bird, 27%. America goldfinch, 49%. Song sparrows, 27%. The American kestrel on the right there is a beautiful bird. I absolutely love this bird. It's a small falcon and used to be very common to see them on wires in, in the country. Uh, they're still there, but their numbers are really diminished. Slide. And some of our birds are either gone or they're almost gone. There were certain species that were very common in the early days of the Christmas bird count. The Northern Bobwhite, the American Tree Sparrow, the Fox Sparrow. Uh, there are no Bobwhite in Frederick County, unless one has actually been, re been released, but no naturally occurring Bobwhites, they are gone. American tree sparrow. Counts used to have, you know, a few hundred. Now we're lucky if we get eight of them. Fox sparrow uh, used to have dozens on account. Now we'll get one or two. The um, bird on the left, of course, is a bob white. It is a quail. It is a bird that was used for hunting, but uh, that's not the reason that they're gone. We don't know exactly why, but. Um, many factors, but we no longer have this beautiful bird in Frederick. Slide. But there are some success stories. Uh, numbers for several bird species have increased significantly. The wild turkey, the bald eagle, the red-shouldered hawk, the common raven, red-headed woodpecker, and the eastern bluebird. Well, there are reasons for a lot of these, the bald eagle, as you know, was a protected species. So it was on the Endangered Species Act. So it has come back because it was protected. Bigger birds like the red-shouldered hawk, they live a long time and they were decimated by DDT. So it's taken them a while to come back. Um, the Eastern bluebird is a very good example of humans helping a species. People love bluebirds. They noticed their numbers were day, way down. Uh, a alien invasive species, the European starling, had, were really growing in numbers and they were out competing bluebirds for nesting spots. So people started creating bluebird houses and they created bluebird trails and they monitored them. And the species has recovered very, very well with the help of humans. Slide. So we don't allow, we have a lot of concert, conservation things in place. We regulate hunting. So what's happened? Why are birds in trouble? Well, a recent study by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife was released a couple of years ago. Massive study. They used data from many, many sources, including the Christmas bird count, scientific studies from all over the United States. And here's what they found. Annual U.S. bird mortality, cat predation, 2.4 billion birds a year, building window collisions, 600 million a year, vehicle collisions, over 200 million, and decreasing in numbers until you get down to wind turbines, 0.2 million. Now I'm going to point this out because I think it's really an important message. When wind turbines were first being put in, there were all kinds of articles everywhere, newspapers, magazines, not just birding uh, magazines, but about birds being killed by the wind turbines. And yes, they do kill birds, but they've learned a lot. They are now play put in places where they uh, do not, where, the, where they're not in competition with bird flights. 
They're even turned off during peak migration. But 0.2 million, I mean, no bird loss is, is really acceptable, but this is a small number. Compared that 0.2 million with 2.4 billion birds killed by cats. Cats, I love them. They are, they are an alien species. They are not natural here, and they are hardwired to kill. There's a very simple solution to the biggest killer of all bird mortality, and that's keep cats indoors. Do not allow there to be free roaming cats. It's really quite simple. Next. So if you're wondering what you can do, well, here's some very simple ideas. Provide quality food and water, especially in the winter time. Uh, I have a bird bath, but I have a heater in it. And boy, when it is cold, a lot of birds are using that as a, as a water source. Install and maintain bird houses with predator guards, reduce window strikes. And let me assure you, that is not easy. Um, I've tried many things and I think all the experts will tell you decals don't work unless you put so many on your window that you can't see out your window. But if you Google that, if you're having problems with birds striking your windows, um, do some research. There are a lot of things that you can do that really will help. And then first and foremost, keep cats indoors. If you have neighbors with free roaming cats, see if you can gently educate them. Another thing you can do is make sure you have bird-friendly landscaping. Uh, birds need evergreens for winter shelter and for predator protection, not just from cats, but you know, from hawks that are coming through. And it's best if you can mimic nature, layer trees, shrubs, and herbaceous plants. When it's safe, keep dead trees, keep your snags, and that will provide insects and nesting cavities for birds. And then select your plants for berries, seeds, and nuts so that they have natural food sources throughout the year. And best of all, if you really want to up your game, slide, go native. They've done a lot of studies on this and scientists absolutely have shown that native plants are so much better for the bird species and other, other species too, all wildlife. Um, they produce a higher number of birds and bird species. They provide better nesting success rates. They give higher quality nectar for butterflies and, and hummingbirds. And then the berries and seeds they provide are critical as a winter food source. Now on the right there, the lower right, you see an American goldfinch. And as you know, he's in his beautiful summer breeding plumage and he is on cone flowers. Well, I have cone flowers. They are a native plant. They are easy. Uh, they're very pretty. They're very handsome. They draw in a lot of insects, a lot of, a lot of butterflies. And then once they start going to seed, you get goldfinch. And it's such a treat to see them feeding from the seed heads. Slide, slide, thank you. Oh, and so important avoid pesticides. The U.S. uses more than one billion pounds of pesticides each year. There has been study after study that talks about the danger of this to all wildlife, not just birds, but also to humans, especially to children. So eliminate pesticides whenever you can. Birds, of course, can be harmed directly by eating contaminated seeds, some pesticides are so powerful, a single grain can kill a small bird. Now, pesticides obviously reduce insects and birds need them to survive, but more importantly, they need them to feed their young. This chickadee on the right has a luscious, soft, big, fat, juicy caterpillar. And it's about to feed its young with that caterpillar. Even birds that eat seeds, virtually every single small bird feeds their young insects. So when we're spraying, we're getting rid of the caterpillars and that little gnawed leaf on our trees and shrubs. 
We're killing the food source that birds need to keep their young alive. Slide. So next thing you want to learn about birds. I, if you're still with us, I hope I hope you you were been bitten a big little bit by the bug. First, buy a decent pair of binoculars. I mean, it's pretty to see birds, but you will be astounded at the intricacies of their patterns and how much fun it is to see their behavior with a decent pair of binoculars. And you don't have to spend much money. I have a pair that I bought for just over $100 on eBay, of course. No, Amazon, excuse me. Uh, it's a very good pair. It's excellent. I keep it in the by uh, the breakfast table so I can watch birds at the feeder. They're good for walks. Um, you don't have to invest a lot of money to really have a nice pair that you can enjoy using. And then buy a good field guide. Now a field guide is a small book, so you can carry it with you easily. And it has just an amazing amount of information. It has pictures of both the male and female of the species. If they change, like the goldfinch, between winter and summer, it will show you both breeding and non-breeding plumage. It'll give you their range. It will tell you um, when you might see them. Are they winter visitor? Are they year-round? Uh, they also, there are also very good apps that are available for smartphones. And the bonus with those is that you can hear the birds' calls. They also have bird calls in the apps. You, I welcome you, I encourage you to join or visit the Frederick Bird Club. We are at frederickbirdclub.org. We meet uh, monthly right now, of course, we're meeting via Zoom. We have guest speakers every month. You can learn a lot about birds and it's a delightful group of people who would be happy to help you if you wanna get more into birding. Uh, we do have some birding excursions, even in COVID, and they are very safe social distancing. And you can find those on our website. We have, we are lucky to have two very good wild bird stores here in Frederick. Um, and they have excellent products and they are the experts. Any questions you have, they will be happy to answer them. I encourage you to install a simple feeding station you know, it's very dead in the wintertime, and boy, it's such delight to watch the birds come in to feed. And by simple, I mean suet will attract the woodpeckers. Sunflower seeds attract a number of birds. Thistle seed or niger seed will attract the small uh, finches. So you can get a lot of birds with just three things. And of course, highly recommend you have a bird bath with a heating element. But I'm going to caution you, you may get bitten by the birding bug and become obsessed. It happens to some of the best people. Slide. Ah, here is my suet cage. It has a squirrel proof cage around the cage. Uh, and this is one of my favorite yard birds. This is a yellow shafted flicker and I wanted to be sure that she got uh, seen here, she is, most woodpeckers are of course black and white with a little red, and she's more taupes and browns and grays and really cool pattern dot patterns, and they have yellow shafts on their feathers, which are a little hard to see here because of her position, because I wanted you to see the perfect red heart she has on the nape of her neck. Um, she is the biggest bird that comes to our feeders. It is always a joy when she or the male come to visit us. Slide. So if you're looking for things for kids or for yourself, because this is these are excellent sources for everybody, uh, the All About Birds website for Cornell Labs. One of the things they offer is Operation Feeder Watch, and it provides tools, charts, and education for monitoring your backyard birds. They have the free Merlin Bird ID app for Apple devices that you can download from the website. And frankly, the Cornell Labs website has every single thing you could possibly want to know about birds. They have pictures, information about behavior, the best feeders, articles about preferred bird seeds, um, 
ideas on conservation, how to create good backyard habitat. Basically, anything you would like, Cornell can help you. Slide. We are very fortunate to have so many good places to go birding in Frederick County. Uh, we have so many parks and they're a delight, but of course, in non-COVID times, they can get pretty busy with people. So here are four places that uh, are really nature oriented and very safe places to go for yourself, your family, just to enjoy nature and enjoy birds. We have two excellent nature centers. Uh, the Katotkin Creek Park and Nature Center is a big area south of Middletown. It has many trails, it has feeders, it has na native plants for the birds, it has nature exhibits, it has little trails for kids, uh, activity trails, and when it's open, they have really nice live reptiles. Fountain Rock Park and Nature Center is closer into Frederick. It's smaller, but has a lot to offer. It also has trails. It has an old quarry, which is filled with water and has some of the biggest snapping turtles I have ever seen when it's warm, of course. Um, they do have loud fishing in a little pond. They have feeders, again, nature exhibits, and they have a lot of kids' activities. Then we have two wildlife sanctuaries. They are owned and maintained by the Audubon Society of Central Maryland, Fred Archibald and Audrey Carroll. They're both big, over 100 acres, have a lot of different habitat, and because they're wildlife sanctuaries, they're very quiet, they're very safe. You can visit them at any time, and they have monthly nature walks. They alternate between the two sanctuaries, and they are being done in a very safe, socially distanced fashion. If you look on their website, Audubon Society of Central America, you can find Central Maryland, you can find out more about their walks and their sanctuaries. Well, that finishes our talk. And I thank you for your time. I hope you've learned something. I hope you, uh, you uh, have decided that it would be uh, fun to spend a little more time learning about birds. Uh, I hope you keep safe, keep sane in these difficult times, keep hopeful, but keep on birding. You'll enjoy it. Thank you. Kathy, thank you so much. It was great to see some of those uh, summer birds again in the pictures and learned a lot about how to help birds. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Kathy. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. It was mm -hmm. enjoyable. <laughs> um, and I do hope that, um, it, that some people got bitten by the birding bug and um, happy birding everyone and thanks again for joining Frederick County Public Library's virtual programming. Bye. Bye.